Next up on KSL Outdoors. A big regulation change to encourage anglers to keep small lake trout at Flaming Gorge. Oh, there's a little pup. Plus, there she is right there. County cheap by land, so ran with them. by sea, and by air. I'm Adam Eakle, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. So we're at the end of South Buckford on a big flat that comes off of the South Buckford Ridge. And we're going to be right at the end of the flat where it drops from 50 feet down into about 120, 130 feet really quick. We're going to check the very top of that flat right at the edge. Okay if there's any fish here. You got high hopes for uh, lots of fish today. I have hopes. <laughs> oh, there's some fish. For over a decade, fisheries biologists on both the Wyoming and Utah side of Flaming Gorge have been warning anglers about a population explosion of small lake trout. Now a small lake trout is any fish under 28 inches, often called a pup. And in just the past few years, biologists have noted an 89% increase in the lake trout population. That overpopulation has the potential to affect the trophy lake trout component here. Perfect pup. A little skinnier. Thank you, sir. Well, that's the kind that we're looking to get out of here. Last year, we also collected some otoliths. That's the ear bone of the fish. And it's a great structure to collect to do age and growth work. Uh, the only time we had done it before was in 1992. In 92, an eight-year-old fish was about 30 and a half inches long, so about 11 pounds. In 2016, that same eight-year-old fish is about 22 inches, or three pounds. So we're talking a drastic change in growth rates for the same age of fish. I mean, these fish are just really abundant way too abundant in the lake and they just need to be thinned down. Fish like that can eat a lot of small kokanee in the two to probably six, eight inch length. That's a lot of kokanee that aren't going to be available for anglers to, to catch. In 2006, Wyoming and Utah implemented an eight lake trout limit. The hope was to encourage anglers to target these smaller fish. Last January, we told you biologists were hoping to raise the limit on smaller lake trout. That's the size we're used to. And now both agencies have agreed to do just that. Starting January 1st, anglers will be allowed to keep 12 lake trout per day and 24 in possession. You know, they had a few good years of really good recruitment and we just need all the anglers to pitch in and try to thin them down so that they don't have a uh, real big damaging effect on the fishery. <laughs> well, Matt, if we could just get the kokanee fishermen to keep the lake trout they catch, right? Oh! Right. We get a lot of kokanee guys saying that when they go out trying to target those kokanee, they actually catch a handful of lake trout, and most of them will just release them because they don't want to keep those lake trout. But They're actually hurting themselves. They are. And you know what, I think that once people really try them, they'll figure out that those lake trout can taste just as good as those kokanee, and it's a benefit to the angler. They can go home with more fish. Oh, you little dog. Swing in a mess. Anglers often struggle to catch lake trout. Oh. oh. The bite can at times be tough. Rob says having the proper gear, fishing the right depth, and using the right lures and bait. Oh, it comes. <laughs> it's the last time. Will help you land some fish. There we got it. Good work. Little piece of sculpin, little piece of white sucker, a little piece of uh, Utah chub, um, any little legal uh, bait. That's really all you need. And then early in the morning like this, two to four inch um, tube jig or swim bait. But what we found that works really well is uh, stuff that glows. So this is a luminescent. Um, lure and that glow really seems to help bring the fish in. Oh, 
braided or fluorocarbon line is also important. Lake trout have hard mouths, so you want a line with little or no stretch so your hook penetrates the fish's mouth. Oh, it's swimming all over the place. Another key, good electronics. Whether you're fishing from a boat or on the ice, seeing and knowing what depth to fish will make or break any day out on the water. Oh, missed him. Oh, 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 I got him! <laughs> that's my fish! Good one, too. <laughs> the lake trout limit isn't the only thing that changes January 1st. Starting January 1st, for those of you in Utah that buy a Utah license and fish the Wyoming side, you usually buy a reciprocal stamp. This year, it was 10 bucks. Well, next year, Wyoming Game and Fish Department has raised that to 30 bucks. For those of you watching in Wyoming and you want to come fish the Utah side, the reciprocal stamp remains $10. Hey, more here in a moment, but first, tonight's climate quiz question. Some of the biggest lake trout in North America are found in the western part of the United States, and Flaming Gorge is nationally known for its trophy lake trout fishery, with fish topping 50 pounds having been caught. The world record lake trout caught on a rod and reel weighed an impressive 72 pounds. Our climate quiz question is, who caught this record fish and where did they catch it? Once you know the angler and lake, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. We'll be right back to Flaming Gorge. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith and Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Meekle. Well, we decided to move to the Utah side of Flaming Gorge where you have just as good opportunity to catch small lake trout here as well. And if you like to do it from a boat, you pretty much can do it year round. Uh, we're just fishing down here by the dam today. Uh, Dutch Sean Draw, Mustang Ridge. It's easy launch ramps and usually throughout the winter these launch ramps are accessible even on good ice years. So this is something that anglers can do all winter long. But we'll see what we can get Keep going, we got a couple hours of daylight here left. How far are we going back? 50. Just a copper spoon. That's it. That's it. Rolling and how fast? Uh, we were doing about 1.6, 1.7, I think. How 70 big? feet. Yeah. But put the put the lure where the fish are. Yeah. You know, we've been marking a lot of fish in the 78 foot, 70 to 80 foot range over there. Oh, there he is. Go ahead. In Utah, starting January 1st, we'll hope it's a lake trout. Not only will you be able to keep 12 lake trout with one over 28 inches per day and 24 total in possession, you'll also be able to keep a two-day possession on the other species in the lake. And it's a laker. Keep in mind, next year, Wyoming will only allow a two-day possession on lake trout only. Uh, maybe that'll come in the future. They've expressed interest in that, uh, going that route like the Utah side of the reservoir, but for 2019 it'll just be the Utah side of the reservoir, multi-species, two-day possession. Caught it on a copper spoon. That's what worked really good yesterday, that and the needle, the same thing in a needle fish. Yeah. Oh, that released. We got a fish. They're a real tasty fish. Um, pretty easy to clean just like any other trout and uh, eat well, and they've got real high omega-3 uh, fatty acids, so they're really healthy fish. Nice. So I've grilled them. I bake them a lot now um, during the winter time. It heats the rest of the house up while I'm at it. Um, smoke them. You can bottle them like you were saying. Uh, just all kinds of options for them. Needlefish. Copper colored needlefish. We're just glad to see it's finally coming to fruition. Hopefully the anglers are going to actually go out there and take the 12 fish that, uh, that the limit's going to be now. I wouldn't be feeding my family or you or mm -hmm. friends if they weren't good and they're enjoyable to eat they're fun to catch they're challenging at times but they're fun to catch i mean i wouldn't be doing all this if it wasn't beneficial to all of us yeah. and the resource so. they're good and yeah. tell everybody um i've had a lot of different fish fries but yours is actually really good i had it with striber before it's phenomenal a cup of flour 
tablespoon of garlic salt, a tablespoon of lemon pepper, and a tablespoon of Creole seasoning. Mm -hmm. It's actually from a good friend of mine, Tom Pettengill. Used to be a sport fish coordinator for the Division of Wildlife. Um, just kind of tweaked it a little bit, but yeah, it's simple, easy to do. Works with any fish, really. Yeah, and these fish are like, just like a trout in my opinion. They're just as good as a, a rainbow or almost, and you look at the fillets, they're almost as colorful as a kokanee fillet. Definitely, De they're just as red as a kokanee. They're eating the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Found at different depths, different habitats. A Little bit tougher to catch at times, but it's basically the same fish. Um, not near the, the sweet taste that a kokanee has, oh, but pretty good. when kokanee season is closed, that's what I'm fishing for. All right. Hey, we'll have more here from the gorge here in a moment, but first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Have a good one. It's coming, and I'm ready. Are you? Hi, I'm Mick Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's fishing report. This is the time of year when you want to check out all your gear. If you have a power auger, fire it up today and make sure it runs, or maybe it's time to switch over to an electric. Now, if you have a heater, make sure these work too. Get out in your garage and fire this up and make sure it's going to be easy to light when you need it. Now, if you have leftover hand warmers, check the expiration date. They do expire. They might not work when you need those, too. Great time of year to check your blades. Your auger blades do go dull. If you're going to sharpen them, remember you can only touch the beveled edge. If you touch the bottom edge, they are ruined. You're going to need new ones. If you have a curved blade like these laser blades, you do have to use this type of a sharpener. The other types won't work. Maybe it's just time to replace your blades. We've got plenty of blades. And one final tip, smell your gloves. Maybe it's time to replace those. Hey, for these tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech, we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here at Flaming Gorge Reservoir, where we're gonna switch from lake trout to bighorn sheep. You know, biologists in the state of Utah has done a lot to keep bighorn sheep abundant here in Utah, and by doing so, they have to count the sheep, and just so happens that November is one of the best times to do it. Uh, today, we're just gonna head out and try and find some bighorn sheep we've got collared out on the gorge, and try and classify them and see what we've got for rams and lambs, and see what populations looking like. So we kind of do a ground, air, and sea technique. In the morning, the bi wildlife biologists fly and look for radio callers uh, with an airplane. There's actually a receiver on the airplane. You can really pinpoint their location. And then once you have some a general idea of where the sheep are, you can go and take a truck and drive to close to where they are, or a lot of times they're, they're surrounding the reservoir, so that's where the boat comes in. And All right, ready? We just went, try to cover as much ground as we can and get as many counted as we can to see how the lambs are doing in rams. Some of the sheep in the herd have been fitted with radial telemetry and GPS collars. Biologists pinpoint the collar and then are able to count the other animals that are with the collared sheep to help with their population estimate. I see her. Yep. Got her. Down low by the lake. Yep. yep. Moving right now. Yep. We actually do this twice a year, and we'll do it in August for a preseason classification, and then end of November, early December. Lucky guy. He's got two other rams with him, but they're not big enough to breed. It's kind of just a way to see if there's lambs in August, and then if there's if there's fewer now, we kind of know it's more of a disease issue than anything else. Because yeah. if they make it to August, most likely they would survive if there wasn't disease in the population. This herd had a major die off due to pneumonia during the winter of 2010. Parasites and disease are a major concern for biologists who manage bighorn sheep in Utah. And it's common in domestic sheep populations, but bighorns aren't adapted to it. So they're more susceptible to it and there's no vaccine that we can give them to prevent it. So it kind of just it spreads from sheep to sheep and wipes them out. Pretty soon you start seeing sheep cough. Yep, yeah, sheep coughing, nose running, just like when you get a get the cold. Usually if they're coughing, it's not a good sign. Bear Top's the place for rams this year, dang. The overall population seems to be trending downward, but we have been seeing more mature rams. So it might be that they just finally got caught up after the last disease outbreak that they're finally going to be big enough for hunters to 
harvest. Despite a lower population, this is still one of the best places in Utah to come and view sheep. A few places to look are from a boat, the Sheep Creek Geological Loop, and Red Canyon. There is some discussion within the Division of Wildlife Resources to offer a few more tags, a opportunity hunt, if you will, on some units. The discussion is going to be happening next year, so if you have an opinion, go ahead and uh, make sure you attend one of the racks before it heads to the Wildlife Board. Hey, more here on KSL Outdoors in a moment, but first, down a different trail in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Hi, I'm Sierra Krebstock with Climate. With the holiday season upon us, I'm here to give you some fun gift ideas for the outdoorsy person in your life. If you're looking for the perfect stocking stuffer, all of our pillows pack down small and are super lightweight. We have sleeping pads for every type of camper, from ultra lightweight to luxury. We even have a King's Camo pattern. One fun idea this season is our Yosemite Artist Series Pad. 10% of proceeds from the sales of this pad will be donated to California wildfire relief efforts. Our new award-winning Versa Blanket has hand pockets, a foot box, and folds into a pillow. Buy a gift for your significant other and yourself with our two-person sleeping pad and sleeping bag. What makes Climate Sleeping Bags unique is our stretch baffles that allow you to move and stretch throughout the night. For a truly unique gift for the outdoor lover in your life, the new Sky Bivy is the hammock reinvented. For gifts like these, visit us at our store in Kaysville or shop online at climate.com. Happy Holidays! Boy, like Rob was saying earlier, just uh, if you're going to come out here in a boat, oh, I'm getting a bite, you know, watch the forecast and uh, if the weather's good like it is today, you can have a spectacular day. I mean, no wind and I'm getting ready to lose a lose a shirt or a jacket here in a minute. Hey, let's check that recreation forecast now. So try and hook this fish by turning it over the guys and gals back in the weather department. Welcome back to Flaming Gorge. I'm Adam Eakle. Hey, don't forget, if you're looking for some ideas to get your family into the outdoors, check our outdoors calendar page right there on our website at ksltv.com. And also, if you have an event coming up and your organization is trying to get the word out, send us a note at aeakle at ksl.com. We'll get it on there as well. It was a pretty common practice for everybody to catch her limit. It was kind of the in thing to do, wasn't yep. it? Yep. What's changed? People just have gotten really conservative over the last couple of decades. A lot of promotion of catch and release. Yeah. They're not as comfortable keeping fish as they used to be. Yeah. But for conservation, we need you to keep these fish up at the gorge. Hey, and when you do catch a boatload of fish, make sure to submit them to our snapshot contest. You too might walk away with the big prize from Camp Chef. Now the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with a couple of brothers and their 30-inch browns. Brothers Scott and Doug caught these two giants on their annual trip back east. They laugh, as it is always fun to see who can get their fish closest to the camera to look the biggest. I'm going with the big buck on the right, Doug, or maybe your arms are just a little longer. The deer hunt was good to the Flinders boys this year. Not only did Scott bag his best buck yet, but his two sons both took two big mature bucks within a couple hundred yards of each other on the same day. Memories, Scott says, that will last this family a lifetime. Van and his son David decided to brave the 14 degree temps in Fish Current Creek Reservoir the other day. Van says it warmed up to a balmy 35 that day. They had eagles flying overhead, no breeze, nothing but nature. Then bang! Suddenly Van was reeling in this beautiful 18 inch brook trout. Van says you never know what you might catch. About a year ago, the DWR released Tiger Muskie into Schofield Reservoir to help battle the chub problem in the fishery. Kevin and his family went to Schofield looking for trout and Kevin ended up with a surprise, his first Tiger Muskie. Kevin says it was a great day fishing with his family and by the looks of your fish, Kevin, the tigers are eating well. But our winner today had a lot of firsts on this day the Thompson family was out in the marsh with dad Sean and son Tate, both having swan tags in their pockets. Both ended up filling their tags by 9 a.m. So what to do? Well, you get grandpa to take you out duck hunting. The day ended with Tate bagging his first limit of ducks. A day full of memories and first that we hope to help you out with as you Tate just won our snapshot of the week.
Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef Versatop Grill and Griddle. Small in size, large in cooking capacity, perfect for those on the go. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef Pellet Grill. From the backcountry to your back patio, Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Well, like John was just saying, that's that's quite a bit of fish. Another four, you'd have a meal for a couple weeks. Yep. Yeah, and starting January 1st, you get to keep 12. Keep 12. Yeah. Be a good thing. Hey, there's some other things coming up this year, Rob. The bourbon bash is just around the corner. Um, what else is coming up? The the bar dingling up on Fontenelle Reservoir is coming up the second uh, weekend of February. It'll Never done that one. Pretty good? Yep. Yep, really good. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we expect a lot of people out for this year's bourbon bash. Yeah, I hope so. Should be a good time. Hey, thanks again, guys, for having us out. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming. Appreciate yeah. it. Come up and visit Flaming Gorge Reservoir. Boy, you get a day like today, you can't beat it, even in December, right? Right. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.